Welcome to the next lab that we're putting up here at the Dexter Middle School in New Mexico Science Channel. This happens to be for marshmallow molecules. Now I want to thank, I can't even remember the website that I got this off of on the internet, but uh, I did take this original marshmallow lab, I have adjusted it a little bit and more or less created it to what we have. If you're interested in it, just send me an email. I'll be happy to send you a copy of it. Basically what we're doing here is we are using marshmallows to represent different atoms. In this case yellow marshmallows will be hydrogen, pink marshmallows will be oxygen, and green marshmallows will be carbon. And we're going to use toothpicks to arrange them in different configurations to represent different molecules. And this is designed for a sixth grade class so we're keeping it very simple. In the instructions, working at your table, use the following chart as a guide to make your molecule for each model. Hydrogen is the white or the orange marshmallows. In this case, we happen to have yellow, carbon green, and oxygen are pink. Due to their number of valence electrons, each element has a specific number of atoms they can bind to. I'll supply a picture of the molecule so you can model yours appropriately. Three, construct a model of the indicated molecule using the appropriate colors of marshmallows and toothpicks. Draw a picture of your model in the box and color it. One of the things that we did differently was we don't have a lot of colored pencils, so I just wanted to make sure that my students could draw the, the molecule in the box. Uh, you should only use one toothpick to connect two marshmallows. Now for those of you in advanced chemistry classes where you know of the double and the triple bonds that some of these atoms can have, please feel free to use two or three toothpicks to indicate your different level of bonding. Alright, so for our assignment, number one was a water molecule. Water, which is H2O, uh, we wanted to know the number of hydrogen atoms, in this case there would be two, and the number of oxygen atoms, in this case there would be one. So I would need to get two yellow marshmallows out and one pink marshmallow. And using the model as my example, this would be the oxygen and here would be the two hydrogens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple of yellow toothpicks and I didn't worry about my students uh, color coding the toothpicks, but we just want to make sure that we kind of set this up in basically the same configuration as what you see on the paper. So that would be a marshmallow water molecule. Of course, if you didn't want to use the toothpicks, you could just ask your students to please just arrange them as you would probably see them. That does look more orange, doesn't it? And so we would probably end up with something more like that as our marshmallow molecule. So whatever way you want to work it is perfectly acceptable, but this would be our marshmallow molecule. And then of course we would draw our marshmallow molecule and we would label the parts and we're done with number one. Flipping the page over, methane, CH4, number of carbon atoms is, whoops, is one, and the number of hydrogen atoms is four. Now we've been talking about um, some of our alkanes, which are our carbon chains, in another uh, laboratory. For this one, if you wanted to do this more or less like it is here, you would probably arrange it without the toothpicks to be something like that. Probably the easiest way to do it. My students, they wanted to arrange it more or less like this, which is very hard to do because it's a triangle. But what I showed, the shortcut on this one, is that we could take and run a toothpick through a marshmallow and we could put a hydrogen on each end and we could run our toothpick come here toothpick back through the marshmallow this way just basically tear the marshmallow up and we could do that 
and we have our methane molecule represented there. So the way they have this one, I was telling the students that the easiest way to do this is to go ahead and do that. Our carbon in the middle, that's a C, H, 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 and H for hydrogen. Some of them actually tried to draw the triangle configuration. Oops. H, C with the other H coming off. That's hard to do. So as you can see, any of those would be fine as long as the student is trying to get it done properly. Next is a hydrogen peroxide. This is H2O2. H2O2, there's two oxygens and two hydrogens, so we're going to need two pinks and two yellows. And on this one, if you wanted to show this, of course, you can show it like that and like that, and there we go. That's basically how it's set up, or we could put these together and show kind of the bonding of the molecule, much like that. But of course, if you wanted to use the toothpicks, then what we would do is we would bond these together. And one of the things I was trying to tell the students too is to lay the marshmallows out before you start and some of our students really they want it to look perfect from the beginning but they don't want to lay it out so there you go there is a hydrogen peroxide molecule two oxygens oxygens bonded then here's our hydrogen and there's our hydrogen hydrogen peroxide molecule I did have extra questions on this one let's go back it says from what you already know what organisms require water to live we could say humans and we need water or we die excuse my fly flying around here how do humans use methane? You may have heard it called natural gas. What is it used for? We use our natural gas for heating and cooling, or heating and cooking. Now one of the things I did find out in doing this experiment was that many of my students do not know what natural gas is. I guess they have an all-electric house and so therefore the water heater is electric and the stove is electric. Uh, many houses that I grew up in, we had a natural gas stove and maybe an electric water heater, an electric stove and a gas water heater. Um, but heating and cooking is what we use most natural gas for. And then hydrogen peroxide, you probably have some of this at home in your bathroom, medicine cabinet. What is it used for? It's to clean cuts. So, there we go. All right, so we have that page of our marshmallow molecules done. And then finally, I had a sugar. This one is a C6H12O6 simple glucose type sugar carbohydrate, simple carbohydrate. C6H12O6, there are six carbons, there are six oxygens, and there are 12 hydrogen atoms. And this particular one, I wanted them, this was the one where we really needed to lay it out. And I'm not going to use the toothpicks on this one. But I am going to lay it out using the marshmallows. Because if we do this right, we can lay this out and have a really good looking molecule. So, this one we start. And basically it's just a matter of following the outline that's been given in the illustration and so there we go there's our there's our carbons and we have some oxygens mixed in here and of course there's an oxygen off over here there's an oxygen that's bonded to this one here and of course back over I suppose if you wanted to you could have this and glue them down to the uh, paper and have students um, come in and deal with it that way. 
there's one here, okay, because this actually needs to be down here. Let me move this over a little bit. There we go. So there's this one out off of here. There's one off over here. And there's one up here. So those are your oxygens. Move him back down there where he needs to be. Then we have hydrogens. Plenty of hydrogens to go around for everybody. There's one bonded up there. Here's this one bonded here. Here's this one that's bonded there. We have another one that's bonded off of this oxygen here with those two like that. There, stay up. We have another one off of this oxygen here because this one is touching that carbon and that's touching that carbon. There we go, like that. We have another hydrogen down here. We have another hydrogen off over here. We have hydrogen up here. We have hydrogens that are down off the side down here. We have, uh, we missed an oxygen somewhere. Yep, we sure did. We missed an oxygen right there with its associated hydrogen. Then we have the hydrogen that's associated with that carbon. And then we have the hydrogen that is located over here with that oxygen. And we have the hydrogen that is associated with that carbon. So if we count, we should have six greens, one, two, three, four, five, six. We should have six pinks, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we should end up with 12 hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So without the toothpicks to connect, and basically the only one that we really need to connect to is across from this carbon to that oxygen, oops, carbon to oxygen, and we would have that, and I have that in the wrong spot, I'm sure of it. Oh, it's this carbon to that oxygen, there we go. That's really the only place that we needed to have that extra toothpick in there because we know there's a line there, we know there's a line there, there's a line connecting those, and then all of these come off of the various molecules. So, I'm not going to take the time to do that, but there you go. That is your simplified sugar molecule made out of, of course, uh, air-filled sugar. And that ends up being our marshmallow lab. So we draw this in. And what really um, amazed me was the number of students who could not duplicate this drawing. And I don't know if it's from not coloring as children. I don't know if it's from not drawing as children. But I do know that many of my students simply could not duplicate this drawing either as a marshmallow molecule or as uh, a drawing, much like I'm doing right here, as I talk to you while I'm doing it. And almost there, and from, where was it, here, we come over, and there's an O, and then we come down. And so there it is. We have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six oxygens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12 hydrogens. Where is sugar found? Everywhere. What does it do to people? 
Well, my students, the replies ranged from it makes you fat, which it does, to it gives you diabetes, which it can, to um, all kinds of other uh, answers, including it makes you happy, uh, it can make you sad if you use too much of it. Uh, there was all kinds of answers that are in there. In my personal experience, too much sugar was not good for my health. I don't have diabetes, but I've always suffered from being overweight, and it's from everything being sweet. And I have a whole other lecture I could give on that, but it's more personal opinion and personal experience than it is science, so I'll stop right there. Let's continue with our questions, though. When you've completed the molecules, please answer the following. Before you were in science class, were you aware of the existence of atoms and molecules? That was for the students to answer. And now that we've discussed atoms and molecules, do you have any questions which you need answered? And that was for them to ask me questions so that I could answer them in class and know which way we needed to go. So this concludes the Marshmallow Lab. Those of you that missed it, please come by and get the packet from me, follow along, and you can certainly get your credit for the Marshmallow Lab. And for everybody else that's viewing from outside of our area, we hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.